motion be agreed to? Call the member for Chifley. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. Earlier this year, I was standing in a queue in Springfield, Illinois, uh, reminding myself that I'd been to the United States once a year, every year, since 2005. I've burned a neat hole in my pocket uh, buying tickets to see NBA games from Stadia in Orlando through to Chicago, from Boston through to Sacramento. And besides a sports addiction driving me to America, I've also been attracted to other elements of the nation. I've sat with 20-somethings uh, in Silicon Valley on four separate trips to that part of California. Um, these young people energised by the prospect of using tech to change and improve the lives of many others. I've sat with, 20, with one, parts of the 20,000 Australians that live and work in Silicon Valley, along with uh, many others from other parts of the world. Nearly 50 per cent of the people in Silicon Valley come from other parts of the world to contribute to development in that part of the United States. I've chatted with Americans who speak so fondly and warmly of our country, always promising to visit, um, uh, to learn more about our own nation that they think of so highly. But the biggest thing that stands out in my mind about America is the promise of America, the promise that it would always stand up for liberty, for freedom, for the pursuit of happiness, not just for its own, but for others beyond its shores. And I go back to, the word, to, the, to what I mentioned at the start, me standing in a chilly winter's day uh, in a queue, having driven hours to get to Springfield, waiting to have a look inside of a place that was home to one of the greatest American presidents we've ever known, Abraham Lincoln. I walked through that house that in this day and age might be considered by some to be tiny, but it actually proved to be a massive formative backdrop to someone um, who had done so much for his own country but inspired others in other corners of the world. Tested by the savagery of a civil war, Lincoln held his country together by ensuring that its promise for freedom and liberty wouldn't be compromised. It was his efforts that I thought of as I walked to see another memorial in Washington, D.C., the face of Martin Luther King etched out in stone, standing proudly there in that nation's capital. It, it has been a shining beacon as much as that has become commonplace to describe. I think of the words of one woman sitting at the feet of another, keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe through, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these the homeless, tempest tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Then many years later I hear these words in an angry whore in December 2015, another man trashing the lines of that sonnet with words that crack across the globe. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what's going on. I can't believe that this is where this great country has got to. And then it exercises that ban and it shuts our people on the basis of faith. I visited the country at that point in time before the inauguration, friends saying to me that it's probably premature to think that it's not right to visit again some time later. But I think it's wrong that a nation that promises so much in freedom can shut out people on the basis of faith and do it in that way is wrong. It's against what America stands for. I think of the words of Paul Keating when he says that once they've pawned the crown, it's hard to reclaim the inheritance. Reclaim the inheritance. And he's right. What America is doing to itself and the way that it's behaving is, is disappointing to so many of its friends. I can't see myself going back to America while this is being maintained. I cannot think of people like me and my faith being taken out in front of their children in a line queuing up to visit the States just on the basis of faith. You know, America, I think the world of you, but I cannot, and people like me, cannot be shamed by you. This is not the promise of the America we love. America is better than this. 
I thank the member for Chifley. Question